Hello, physicists, and welcome. In this session, we'll be looking at the five-step problem-solving process. Step one, draw a picture of the system. Establish a coordinate system with positive and negative directions. Step two, what are you trying to find? Sometimes this is known as the unknown. Step three, list the given information and the information you can figure out from the problem statement. This is often known as the knowns. Step four, identify appropriate relationships between the answer you are trying to find and the given information. These are the equations, formulas, sometimes laws that uh, relate our find to our given. And last five, solve the problem and take a look back. Does your answer make sense? The five steps can be broken down into just the highlighted words. Step one, picture. Step two, find. Step three, given. Step four, relationships. Step five, solve. solve. Uh, this would be a method that will meet the requirements for um, problem statements that say show all work. Our problem. A rock is dropped from a bridge. Three seconds later, it hits the water. What is the rock's velocity as it hits the water? Of course, we'll assume no air resistance in this class. So the first one is our picture. Let me draw a picture of that. I've drawn my picture here. I want to establish a, a direction. So I'm going to say that up is the positive direction. If I was worried about how far it fell, fell I may need to establish a, um, a zero position. It could be here at the bridge deck. It could as easily be at the water level. Next to find. What are we trying to find here? For a little physics uh, shorthand, we can end up using our final velocity is what we're trying to find. Hey, what are we given? Hey, certainly our change in time is stated explicitly. Three seconds. Um, other ideas. Well, we know the acceleration. The acceleration, uh, we're on Earth, and if something is falling, our acceleration is going to be g. But we have our uh, direction up as being in the positive direction. This is going to be accelerating down, so minus g, which is going to be equal to minus 10 meters per second per second. Hey, any other information that we have? Hey, and we do, we see that the rock is being dropped. It's not thrown, but it's dropped. So our initial velocity is equal to zero. Let's take a look at relationships. We want to find a relationship that will relate what we're trying to find, our final velocity, to the things that we know. And here's one. Our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity plus our acceleration times time. Looks like we have enough information here to go ahead and solve the problem. So my final velocity is equal to my initial velocity. I'll put the numbers in zero minus 10 meters per second per second, the rate at which we are changing velocity times our time, three seconds. I put this together, I get my final velocity is equal to minus 30 meters per second. Does it make sense? Well, it's falling down, so that negative sign certainly makes sense. 30 meters per second is about uh, 50 to 60 miles an hour. Something is falling. It would certainly more be more than a walking pace, but it wouldn't be hundreds of miles an hour. So this is a reasonable answer. Let's take a look at another example now. And this one, I throw a ball straight up with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. What is the maximum height it will reach? The real release point is two meters above the ground, and there is no air resistance. Let's go ahead and I'll draw a drawing here. So here's my drawing, throwing uh, up, 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 up to the very top. My uh, release uh, velocity, 25 meters per second. I'm establishing up as being my positive uh, direction, and I know I released it uh, two meters above the ground. Hey, so what are we trying to find here? We're trying to find the maximum position, and we're given a couple of things. We're given the initial velocity is 25 meters per second and we're given a see initial position of two meters other things that we know our acceleration we are on earth so we know our acceleration is going to be g and in this case we're going to be accelerating uh, downward so it's going to be minus g so i can call that minus 10 meters per second per second. Remember, if you're doing these uh, problems for expert TA, use minus 9.8 or 9.8 for G rather than 10. And any other information that we know 
Um, yeah, there is one other piece. At the very top, we know that vol has stopped going up and hasn't started coming back down. So at that very instant, it's the very top, we know that our final velocity is equal to zero. Okay, so to establish a relationship, change this just a bit. So our find our x uh, max will really be, hey, find our x or position final. I'll say that. Okay, so now let's uh, uh, go. We're trying to find that. So we know our final position is equal to our initial position plus our change of position or displacement. Um, I know this. Um, this one's going to be a little bit of a problem. We don't have that yet. I know that my change in position is equal to my average velocity times my change in time. Hmm. Okay, this one's going to be uh, uh, maybe a little more straightforward. Um, I can figure out my average velocity. I don't know it directly. So, um, and time is going to still be a little challenging. Let's go ahead and figure out our average velocity. Our average velocity is going to is equal to our initial velocity plus our final velocity to take an average to divide by the number of elements divided by two. Hey, this one, I know the initial and final, so I can figure out my average velocity uh, here. Last thing we have to figure out is our delta t. Okay, think of relationships uh, for that. I know that my acceleration, the different values here uh, that we have, is a final velocity minus an initial velocity, all that divided by time. That's nice because or change in time. Um, I have an acceleration. I've got a final velocity, an initial velocity, and a change a change of time. So I'm going to rewrite this. And I know it's my change of time is equal to my final velocity minus my initial velocity over the acceleration. Hey, that'll give us our delta t that we need over here. Arrow, and we were able to figure out delta v, so we should be able to figure out delta x, which will tell us uh, what our final velocity is. Okay, so I'm going to have to kind of solve this a little bit backward. Let's go with the uh, first one. All right, this is the last one we figured out. Delta t is going to be equal to final velocity 0 minus our initial velocity 25 meters per second, and divided by our acceleration is minus 10 meters per second per second. Why is it minus 10? Because I'm calling the up direction positive. I do some quick math here and I know my time is 2.5 seconds. Hey, that makes sense. If I throw something up, it loses 10 meters per second on every second that goes by. Go ahead and we'll figure out our average velocity. Our average velocity is equal to our initial velocity, 25 meters per second. Our final velocity at the time is zero. We'll divide that by two. And we find that our Average velocity is a positive 12.5 meters per second. And let's go and it looks like we have enough information to find our delta x. A delta x is equal to our average velocity. My average velocity, which I know, times my change in time. Hey, that is, let's find out, average velocity is 12.5 meters per second. Our time is, oh, I see my error here. This, of course, should be positive 2.5. Um, meters per second, so we have a negative divided by a negative, that would be a positive, times my 2.5 seconds, and I multiply those, I get 31.5 meters. Hey, so we are just about done. Hey, my final position is equal to my initial position, 2 meters, plus my change of position, 31.5 meters, tells me the maximum height it reaches is 33 0.5 meters is our final position. I'll highlight that by putting a box around that. Hey, let's see if this is a reasonable answer. Hey, we have a positive value. Yeah, if I throw the ball up, it goes in a positive direction. Now, how about the amount? 33 uh, meters is about 100, a little bit more than that feet. The height of the LaSalle building from uh, Eddy Street to the very top is about 80 feet or so. If you were a good, strong baseball player, could you throw it as high as the building? Probably yes. So yeah, this passes the uh, smell check. Hey, so that's the uh, five-step problem-solving uh, method with a couple of examples. And that's physics.